Hey guys, this is Boaz, an adult northern blue tongue skink. And this is Boaz's grandchild, a little bitty baby born from Groot and Picacho this season. And today I want to talk to you about calcium, vitamin D3, and supplementation. This episode is brought to you by Cage's Custom Reptile Enclosures, combining modern beauty with functionality to create the perfect home for your pet. Check them out at reptilecages.com. Hi, I'm TC Houston, former professional zookeeper, lifelong reptile fanatic, and blue tongue skink breeder. And you're watching Reptile Mountain TV, evidence-based, captive bred, and animal-focused. Well, guys, there's not going to be a clue game this episode because we've got other prizes to give away because we've hit 3,000 3, subscribers. That is amazing. So we're going to celebrate this milestone with some giveaways. So the first prize, first place, is this 2017 Reader's Choice Lizard Photo of the Year by my buddy, Travis de Lagerheim. It is a signed copy. He signed it for us. And it is amazing. Now, he's also won a year previous for Crocodilian Photo of the Year. He's an excellent photographer, so go check his stuff out. He also owns Reptiles, Inc., and I believe there's a Facebook page for that. But this is a Carusia Zebrata, a monkey tail skink. How cool is that, that a skink was the lizard photo of the year? And not only that, but Joe Ball, my buddy who runs Blue Tongue TV and um, is the morph blue tongue skink guru down in Australia he won lizard personality of the year for 2017 so awesome congrats Joe so this is first place and this right here which is an American skinker t-shirt with actually it's got Boaz on there this will be the second place it's a size medium 100% cotton and so let's go into how you can win these prizes Okay guys, so first place, the first person to answer these three questions correctly will win this amazing photo. And the second person to respond on the, in the comments down below will win this t-shirt. And I will ship it anywhere in the world as long as you can receive it. I'll ship it to you and you have to answer the following three questions. Question number one, in episode 52, how old is Quaker? Question number two, in episode 34, I mention a book regarding the idea and the concept of naturalism, being a naturalist and leave no trace. Now the book is The Blank Blank Almanac. What are those two words? And then in question number three, in episode 28, who did I get my Stimson's pythons from? The first two to answer that, first one will get this, second will get this. Good luck guys. Thank you so much for watching and on with this episode. So guys, calcium supplementation as far as what we give our animals is very, very important. So calcium is an important element for vertebrates uh, and some invertebrates as well. Calcium for biological organisms can play a vital role. For vertebrates, it's essential for bone strength and growth. So. Our blue tongue skinks, they're vertebrates. There is no difference between them and some other animals as far as their need for calcium. Now the certain amounts and the way that they get it, that can vary considerably. But calcium is very important. There are other elements that are also equally important in an animal's overall nutrition for their welfare for our blue tongue skinks. Calcium and phosphorus are two that tend to be very important. Now why phosphorus? Well. Phosphorus also binds with calcium to, to form calcium phosphate, and that is an essential piece of nutritional development as well. However, when phosphorus is present with calcium, and calcium is also present in the diet, they tend to be drawn to one another and bond to form that calcium phosphate. What happens is if there is more calcium than there is phosphorus, then there is residual calcium, which is good, 
And then that coupled with vitamin D3, either through UVB and heat synthesis in the cholesterols in the skin to provide natural D3 or through vitamin D supplementation through diet. Either way, once there's calcium and D3 that's left over after calcium phosphate's been bonded, then that calcium will be used to be absorbed into the animal for bone strength. Now, if there's too much phosphorus and not enough calcium, the phosphorus will pull calcium from somewhere. And sometimes that can even be from your animal's bones. So a high phosphorus diet can actually cause metabolic bone disease regardless of how much UV or D3 you provide because it has to be coupled with calcium. And so the proper ratio that we talk about with calcium to phosphorus that most, um, most nutritionists and reptile and animal experts agree is about a two two parts calcium to one part phosphorus. That way you have a calcium phosphate bond of one to one, pretty much, and then you have an extra set, a whole other extra set of calcium that can then be coupled with vitamin D3. That squirrel is back <laughs> from other episodes. He's about to jump. You stay there, squirrel. <laughs> um, and and th so that extra calcium can then be absorbed through using D3 into the bone growth and development. So it's essential to have a good balance of calcium. There's also essential to have the right amount of calcium because you can have a two to one ratio of calcium and it could be half the diet or it could be 0.0001% of the diet, it's still the same ratio. So it's not just the ratio that matters, but it's the percentage of calcium in the in total diet that actually matters. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about amounts of D3 in some supplementations. So let's dig into it a little bit more. So as most of you know, I'm a strong advocate for feeding dog food. The reason I am is because dog food also has a well-balanced nutritional component. Now dog food approximately, on average, has around 0.3% calcium and 0.2 to 0.1.5% phosphorus in an as-fed wet food. Now that's on average kind of give or take. You actually have to call the dog food companies, which I've done, and get the actual numbers and do the calculations yourself. So, but you could also just go off of some other breeders who do that and then just go from there. So for example, Zignature. I just called this May. Now they've changed their uh, their actual components several times recently, and I just called this May, this month of 2018, and got the amount of calcium and the amount of phosphorus in a can as fed. Now it is 0.55% calcium and 0.36% phosphorus, according to the company, in a can. So. That equates down to about one gram of calcium and about half a gram, you know, a little bit more than half a gram of phosphorus. It, the ratio is not exactly two to one. So we have to do some a little bit of adjustments. But we also need to know how much calcium per amount of total food should be fed. So we look into the poultry industry because there's not, guess what, there's not a lot of research on blue tongue skink diet because well, there's not enough consumerism when it's not, there's not enough money in it yet for people to care enough to drive that research. Even researchers, they have to have grants in order to do the research. They have to have money to do it. And unfortunately, money makes the world go round. So we look into things that are similar because ornithology and herpetology aren't that uh, different. In fact, many people believe that herpetology should fall under ornithology and amphibians should break off and it should be reptiles and birds because we, they are very, very similar evolutionary and uh, ev through Evo Devo ev evolutionary development. So anyway, we're going to look at poultry because that industry is huge. I mean, how many, how many chicken places are you know, down the street from you? There's probably at least one unless you live in a super rural area and then you at least got a Dairy Queen. Even small towns have dairy queens. Anyway, um, and they sell they sell chicken. But anyhow, poultry is a huge market. So they've looked and done some research at chickens, and they found that about a one to one and a half percent component of calcium in a chicken feed uh, produces a very healthy animal. Now, anything over two percent of total as-fed food of calcium starts to produce some significant problems because calcium can also have challenges with digestion. So 
We don't want to go above 2% as fed, and we don't really want to go too much lower than 1% as fed. Anywhere in between 1 and 2% as fed of calcium is, is a good ratio for a reptile. It's because they are closely related to birds. However, blue tongue skinks, because they're not producing calcified eggs, and they don't need that m as much calcium, I would say it's closer to the 1% uh, as fed, and it can be anywhere between 1% and maybe 0.75%, so give or take. So what is that in an as fed? So doing those calculations, if you look at like a 369 gram can of dog food, you're gonna look at 1% is three grams, okay? Uh, 2% would be around 3.6 grams is 1%, 2% is around 7 grams. You don't want to go over 7 grams adding to the total can. So I would recommend around 3 grams adding on. Now if you add 3 grams in there, that's going to be at that 1%. That's also going to be a even 3 to 1 ratio for calcium to phosphorus. And many people believe that most um, reptiles can metabolize 3 to 1 uh, calcium to phosphorus ratio quite well. It doesn't seem to have any ill effects. When you go higher than that, we're starting to get a little bit too much calcium, which can cause digestive issues. And if you put too much calcium and D3, it can actually calcify an animal's organs. So I've been throwing out all kinds of numbers here. So let's just look at the nitty gritty practical for those who just want to know how much do I feed my animal. So before we go too far into how much we feed and exactly what to do, it's also important to note that there are different calcium with D3 supplementations. So if you're using the proper level of UVB, and I mean the proper level where you've got a solar meter out there and you are measuring that stuff and you are certain that your animal is getting UVB, then you probably don't need to worry as much about dietary supplementation of D3. Uh, you should still do it probably once a month at a lower dosage just to be on the safe side. But for those who want to use dietary supplementation of D3, it's important to understand that different products have different amounts of D3 per calcium. For example, example, <laughs> for example RepCal has approximately 100,000 international units per pound of D3 in its calcium, whereas for example, the, I don't know, the, the Zoomed Reptivite with D3 only has about 10,000 international units per pound of D3. And then there, it varies across the board from, you know, 10,000 per international unit. Well, actually from zero when it says no D3, but the ones that say D3, it could go from 10,000 international units per pound all the way up to 250,000 international units per pound and they all say calcium with d3 so it's important to look at that because you could literally give 10 to 25 times the amount of calcium with d3 in certain brands versus the one time one amount in another brand so if you are trying to adjust for example if a dog food has a one to one calcium to phosphorus ratio you need to bump that to two to one but you don't want to overdo the d3 because too much d3 can cause a toxicity and is unhealthy for your animal could actually kill them so you want to be careful but you don't want to underdo it either so you, you could use a calcium that has a lower amount of D3 because you can up the amount of calcium without dramatically upping the amount of D3 that goes into that food and balance it out quite easily. And that's what I do when, when a food is out of balance. But some foods are spot on. Now how much international units per, D, per pound of D3 should be in calcium for a blue tongue? Well, the, the general idea with reptiles according to some of the uh, nutritionists, is a safe realm is 60,000 to 100,000 international units per pound. So what I do is I rotate. I will take a, a medium D3, which is this RepCal medium D3, which has a lower amount of D3 per calcium, and I will feed that one time. And then the next time I will feed something like Flukers or uh, RepCal, which has a higher at about 100,000 
uh, international units per pound. And so that it's kind of balancing out between the, the lower end and the higher end and we're hitting that 60 to 100,000 because it is fat soluble and it can be stored in the, the cells. So it's kind of a balanced out. Now with babies, I feed, I don't put calcium on their food every feeding because they're eating every day. I feed, put calcium on their food every other day and then I rotate those calciums the same. And then with other um, adults, I do feed it every day or not every day, excuse me, every week I do provide calcium every feeding, but I do rotate a low level of calcium versus a high level of calcium. And it all depends on if you're using UVB, if it's good UVB, if you're putting them outside at all, and so on and so forth. Now, when you're talking about looking at like adding a high calcium um, vegetation, such as turnip greens or something of that nature, the amount of calcium in that is so minute, even in a cup, it's like 40 milligrams in a cup of turnip greens or something similar. About 40 milligrams, which is tiny. Now, if you split that up into individual servings for a reptile for your skink, we're talking really small amounts of calcium. So you are not putting in a lot of calcium into that animal. So you still need to make sure you're doing your supplementation so that you can do the calculations and make sure it's at about 1% of weight as fed to your animal. Now there's other vitamins that are also important. So I do provide a calcium with, um, with other multivitamins once a month for my animals. Animals that are having any sort of shed problems, you might look into looking at vitamin A and making sure that they're getting enough vitamin A because that is skin and eye issues. Vitamin uh, A deficiency can show up in shedding problems, also in like swollen eyelids, something of that nature. So look into that. Having that multivitamin once a month is usually sufficient, as well as dog foods have that vitamin A in it. When you're doing the home brew, you really don't know what you're getting and, and what you're putting into your animal, whereas if you're doing the dog food, they have, they have done a lot of that research for vertebrates and animals. And, even though skinks and dogs are very different, they do still have some very similar biological needs. So, and then how I do it, I dust lightly. So once you've got the, the measurements, I've measured it out, so between the seven and the three grams, so I usually shoot for three grams of calcium, and this is kind of what I'll do, is I'll, I'll measure that out, and I've done it a couple times, and now I kind of just go by eyeballing it, because it's not a, I mean, a precise science. I mean, I doubt you you measure to the exact millimeter or milli, milliliter how much milk you consume or how much of you know meat you're consuming. If you do, that's <laughs> wow. Don't want to go out to eat with you. You would be very interesting. But anyway, um, so I dust lightly over the top. It looks kind of like a powdered donut. And when that three grams is spread out over the entire can, that's kind of how it works out. It just you just dust it kind of like a powdered donut, and and that actually is sufficient and it has produced very healthy, pristine animals that are able to reproduce and produce pristine animals as you saw with Boaz and then his little uh, grandson and I've got several animals that have been raised up and are now producing grandchildren or grand skinks, if you will. So guys, I hope that that kind of helps you make uh, good decisions with your supplementation and I hope that it leaves your animals being super healthy if you take the advice. And as always, I want to say thank you to my patrons. Thank you to everyone who's been subscribing. Thank you to all the viewers out there. You guys are amazing. If you want to join the Patreon patrons team, hop on over and check that out. Please also check out the links in the description. Yes, please check out the links in the description. The links have good info in them. So please don't skip out on that. And as always, guys, remember, opinion is not fact.